Welcome back. We're here with LA Chargers tight end, Asante Cleveland. How are you doing? Nice. So nice, nice. So nice show, to man. have you here this morning. So you look fabulous. Oh, thank you for having me. I know. Oh, my man. That's like, that's my game. Yeah, pocket <laughs> squares are required here. Good morning. They are. They are. <laughs> it's amazing. When I was introduced to the pocket square, my whole like fashion game changed, right? The hardest thing like, is trying to keep it up. I know. <laughs> Every morning, they're like, Rob spends 15 minutes just trying to get his pocket square right. You, know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But there's something that was so powerful about men, good jackets and nice right? pocket squares. So we have heard a few things about you. We heard that you, you injured your knee yes. and that you are up to some incredible positivity for your field. Is that correct? I try. I yeah, do my best. I mean, rumor, rumor has it you are quite the game changer, right? Asante. I, I have been told that before. <laughs> what does that mean to you? Uh, well, to me, I feel I'm a game changer because I try to mentor other people that have been through my similar situation or younger guys who are just coming into the league who don't really know what to expect. So I try to give them all the insight I can to help them avoid some of the speed bumps that I went through or just to know what to expect. Yeah. What were some of those speed bumps? Uh, so I was an undrafted free agent coming out of college and that is a very, very rocky road just because they have no real money invested in you. So you could be gone like that. Wow. So I've seen some guys I came in with cut in a day. <gasps> so it's a lot of pressure, wow. a lot of pressure, but yeah. It's the most fun job I've ever had in my life. Well, <laughs> it's incredible that these men have a mentor like you because did you have that guidance? Uh, I've been fortunate. So I played on three different teams my rookie year. I was in San Francisco, so I was under Vernon Davis, so I got to learn from him. And then went to New England and got to learn from Rob Gronkowski, Tom Brady. And then coming to San Diego, or now L.A. No mentors, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I got to learn from Antonio Gates, arguably the best tight end to ever play the game. So I've been fortunate to learn from them, so I feel it's my job to try to give back a little bit mm -hmm. if I can. So before we go on, I just have to say that your voice, your voice, have you, you heard this? I, so. I mean, I'm, I'm like, uh, my I'm like, I don't know, just go on the radio and listen to yeah. you 24-7. Hey, I feel like it's like the voice of God, let there be God. <laughs> <laughs> like Morgan Freeman. Yes. Okay, well. <laughs> Well, Morgan Freeman. well, since I've had this knee injury, I've used this time to try to, I've done voice acting classes, I've done acting classes, just to fill time, try to see what I would like to do. I've done a little broadcasting, just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right? So if you, sorry, no, um, if you had a, what is, the, what is the ideal scene? If you have a miracle around it, around your career, what, what was the real mission around um, it? Obviously, play as long as I can. Uh, hopefully, when the time comes, get into coaching. Uh, but yeah, just kind of open-ended, get into acting, broadcasting, maybe be on this show. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. here right now. I'll be, I'll be right. a successor. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Did you always know you wanted to be a football player? Uh, no, my dad played in the NFL, but he never really pushed me. Uh, I kind of just stumbled upon football. I thought I was a basketball player, and then I stopped growing at 6'5", when I thought I was going to be like 6'10". Yeah. So football just kind of came natural. Yeah, it's amazing because the number of you know players that actually make the NFL is ridiculously low. You know, did you have faith in that? Did you know uh, what happened? At first, I mean, coming into college, everybody thinks, oh, I'm for sure going to go to the NFL. By senior year, I was like, eh, it's kind of iffy. I heard a stat that it's like a quarter of 1% of the people who play football ever makes wow. the NFL. Yeah. Wow. So I'm one of the lucky wow. few. That in and of itself is a miracle. And yeah. now from what we understand, what I've heard is that in the NFL and that entire culture, if you will, a lot of the guys come in, they have these big lives, big whatever, and yet they a lot of them go bankrupt, right? A lot of them can't keep the money. And that's part of the coaching, right? That you want to help that kind of mentality around all of it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people don't realize that we only get paid for the season. So you're making good money for about 17 weeks. And after that 17 weeks, it's done. So if your spending habits are crazy throughout those whole other weeks and they don't slow down once the off season comes, then you're gonna be in trouble. So that's why you hear a lot of people, I think 77% of NFL players go bankrupt after it's three crazy. years. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, 77%. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's mind blowing. It seems like you have such a level head. Mm, right? right? Who do you like? credit to that uh my dad for sure he uh taught me to never get too high never get too low the poem if it says uh if you can meet with both triumph and disaster and treat those two the same that's how i try to live my life mm. like 
nothing's ever that bad, nothing's ever that great. Just kind of keep a level head. Chills. Yeah. No, we might have to say that. He's dad. a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> He's a preacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I have a question because I think one of the most difficult things that an athlete can ever face is um, an injury, particularly like a meniscus or something mm. like that. It's a pretty severe, you know, can be a severe injury. That being said, most of the outcomes are pretty good. But for you, how did you get through that? I mean, has it been challenging where you kind of, at some point, did you second guess whether you really wanted to be committed to the NFL? I mean, did you have any of those concerns and how you sort of been working your way through that mentally? So the hardest thing is obviously the mental part of it because you have to trust that the doctors did their job. So I had a shoulder surgery my freshman year and I felt like I didn't really handle the mental part of it as well. I came back a little timid, not necessarily the same player I was. So with this, I just know that it's either fixed or it's not. But I can, all I can do is be the best I can be. Yeah. I oh, love that. So simple, <laughs> so simple and profound. Yeah. <laughs> so simple and profound. Yeah. So what advice do you give for people out there? Because whether they're going to make the NFL or not, or they have another dream, what advice would you give them? Uh, definitely have a plan B because the NFL is such a long shot. Um, so that's what I've been using this time to figure out what my plan B, C, D could be. But definitely don't put all your eggs into one basket. Mm. Have other passions, figure out what your other passions are. And when your time comes, to not, when your career is over, to step into that. The world is so grateful right now that you have a plan B in mentoring <laughs> and sharing your light and love. I mean, I hope plan A and all the football works forever, but your plan B is so amazing. Thank you for Thank sharing you. your light you. and your insight with us. It's truly inspiring. Yeah, and we plan all want tickets to the LA Chargers right. and to the Actors. I got you. I got you. He is a game changer at its finest. I love that. I'll so get you tickets if you show me who makes your suit. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I got you covered, man. I'll take care of you. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> so where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, Cleveland Show underscore 82. That was a hard Instagram. I was looking you up and I'm like, what is his, his handle here? So say it one more time. <laughs> Cleveland Show underscore 82. I Cleveland love that. Just show. like uh, yeah, the Seth show. Show. Yeah. 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 This it. is the Cleveland Show. <laughs> Look at my life. And so what's coming up for you this week? We got Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's the girls want to know. <laughs> uh, maybe a nice dinner. Nothing. I Probably should put a lot more thought into it. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys right. give me the platform to think about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day this week, right? <laughs> I love it. Well, it's so nice to meet you. I'm really excited Thank for your you journey. For I'd love to have you come on as a co host sometime yeah, and sure. hang a little bit with us <laughs> and Thank uh, you. Thank find out more about all the coaching you're up to because I think it's a really important, important, very influential area of the world. And if you can impact I mean, those guys, kind of find themselves in a more, I don't know, a way that's making a difference in the world. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for thank everything you, you much. do. Yeah. So thank stay tuned, you guys. We'll be right back with a bunch more people, inspiration, inspiring and motivating and bringing miracles. Success to beyond beauty. Success beyond beauty. <laughs> stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs>